So the Froebel study was a study done on patients who sustained injury to their anterior cruciate ligament or their ACLs in their knee. And the ACL is a very important ligament that helps stabilize the knee and prevent giving way episodes or instability episodes of the knee, in particular in patients that are involved in planting pivoting type activities. And in the Froebel study, they basically randomized patients into two treatment arms. The first arm, patients were treated with rehabilitation, and only if they developed subsequent instability episodes did they undergo a delayed sort of optional ACL reconstruction. In the other arm, patients underwent rehabilitation plus early surgery, so they underwent ACL reconstruction within about a 10-week period from the time of their injury. Then they follow these two groups of patients for about a two-year period and they had various testing that was done both on how the patients felt their knees were and also on the doctor clinically examining their knees and then they compare the two groups at the two-year mark. So when they looked at very specific outcomes uh, criteria, in particular the, what's called the CUS scoring system which is a scoring system we typically use for ACL reconstruction, at two years they found no difference in the overall CU scores at the two-year mark between the two groups. However, if you carefully look at the data, uh, and in particular look at the amount of patients that required meniscal surgery, patients that were in the delayed or the optional ACL group had a higher rate of meniscal procedures done in the follow-up period. And sort of what that tells us is that those patients may actually be at higher risk of developing further meniscal damage if you leave their ACLs alone. And that actually confirms many other studies that have shown that patients who have ACL deficient knees that don't undergo ACL reconstruction do have a higher risk of developing further cartilage and meniscal damage which ultimately may lead to early arthritis. Now having said that, they also found that uh, over 50 percent of their patients that were in the optional group did not undergo ACL reconstruction. And that confirms what we already know as well, is that there are a lot of patients, depending on their activity level, their age, um, whether or not they have a bad meniscus tear at the time of their injury, there's all kind of factors that play in, but it basically confirms that there are some patients that can do well without ACL reconstruction and still participate in, um, in, uh, in sporting and athletic activities. I think that the bottom line to an ACL injury is that every knee and every injury and every patient is specific. They all have specific demands on what they want to do. Each injured knee may have different levels of damage to their meniscus or articular cartilage. And all of these things weigh into the decision making on whether or not to recommend early surgery or try non-operative treatment with the option of doing delayed surgery down the road. And that basically is what we do, uh, you know, it's, it's consistent with current clinical practice. Just an example, if you have an 18-year-old uh, that's a high-level soccer player, uneven terrain, lots of planting, pivoting, high, a very, very high demand on the knee, that's a patient who would be very, would rarely be able to do that kind of an activity uh, without an ACL reconstruction. However, a patient, uh, as we noted in the editorial, like, let's say 35 years old, who is a recreational bicyclist, who is an act, act very active patient, uh, but very different type of activity, that patient may do very well uh, without ACL reconstruction. Uh, on a side note, if somebody has a very large meniscal tear at the time of their ACL injury, which is documented on the MRI, that is deemed to be repairable. In other words, we can go in and suture it or fix the meniscus then we typically recommend ACL reconstruction at the same time. And that's for several reasons. Number one is if you fix a, uh, the meniscus and leave the ACL alone, there's a very high risk of meniscal repair failure. And the other is that if you look at meniscal repair healing rates, if you do it alone, or compare that to when you do a meniscal repair at the time of ACL reconstruction, when you do the two surgeries together, there's a much higher healing rate of the meniscus. So for that reason, the status of the meniscus may actually be the thing that tips you over in terms of recommending surgery. So as you can see, there's just so many factors that play into the decision making when it comes to um, 
recommending or not recommending a, you know, early ACL reconstruction. I think what we do know is that patients that have an ACL uh, deficient knee or an ACL tear may cope early on, but then as they increase their activities, they may find down the road that their knee is just not functioning uh, to, to what they want it to function at, and they'll have delayed surgery. And we have patients that have delayed surgery six months after injury and years after injury. And in fact, the literature shows that many patients have ACL reconstructions even after two years after injury. So in the Froebel study, they follow patients only for a two-year period, and 40% of the patients in the optional group ended up having surgery. We feel that that number will probably increase over time, as we know a lot of patients will undergo for ACL reconstruction even further down the road. Patients who are low-level you know, low uh, athletic people or high-demand athletes, people can tear their ACLs in numerous ways. Uh, they can tear it in car accidents. They can tear it during sporting activities. They can fall off a roof putting on Christmas lights. There's a lot of ways to injure the knee and tear your ACL. And whether or not you need a reconstruction is dependent on all the factors that we previously discussed. Another really important part of the puzzle, it may be the most important part of the puzzle, is the status of the articular cartilage um, at the time of ACL, at, during the ACL injury. So when you get an MRI, you'll see the ACL might be torn, the meniscus may be torn, but the status of the articular cartilage may ultimately be the most predictive piece of the puzzle, if you would. So if you have a very bad cartilage lesion, that will predispose you to arthritis no matter what we do. And at the time of surgery, assuming that you recommend surgery for treatment of the articular cartilage injury, we would also favor ACL reconstruction because the articular cartilage repair techniques that we have are also dependent on the stability of the knee. And so ultimately the greatest predictor of outcome may not be whether someone has a stable knee or an unstable knee because of ACL deficiency, but it might be what happens to the articular cartilage at the time of the injury. Because if the articular cartilage is significantly injured, that may ultimately be the main cause of developing arthritis in the knee and, and lead to a poor outcome. The editorial is basically a commentary and a critique um, of the Froebel study. And very few studies in orthopedic surgery are, are able to successfully randomize patients into surgery versus non-surgery. And so the authors really need to be commended because uh, it's a very hard study to perform and to actually have large enough numbers to actually reach some sort of conclusion. So I think from that standpoint, um, although there have been studies done before on surgery versus no surgery, this really has been helpful. And I think the study, although it was very well done, the fact that it only had two-year follow-up, we really don't know the long-term conclusion. We don't know the consequences, if you would, of each of the treatment strategies. Uh, will all patients develop arthritis? Will the patients that have early reconstruction perform at higher levels of activity and not develop arthritis? Really longer term follow-up is needed to really answer the question. But I think the main thing that the study shows is that it confirms what we have always intuitively thought and known. And that is that not all patients need their ACLs reconstructed. And that the decision to perform an ACL reconstruction really needs to be individually tailored.